Welcome back to episode two of the Epi Build Blog. So last time we were able to uh, cut out holes for the servos in the nose as well as clean up some of the eyelets for the control. We bonded together our servos with our elevator servo in the front and our two aileron servos in the back. We depinned our receiver. And we finalized the attachment of the throwing peg. Also in episode one, we were able to complete the control horns, as you can see here. So in this episode, we'll be taking care of finishing up the power connection system and the servo installation, the receiver installation. For the power setup, we're using a jack here that will break the connection between the ground whenever you plug in a charging plug like this. This does not have to be connected to anything to break this connection, so it will shut the plane off when it's plugged in without any wi additional wire. For the charging plug, I've gone ahead and soldered my wires here already. Both my power wires have been attached to the center pin with a ground to the battery and a ground to the receiver on either side. This ground connection is what gets broken. The basic setup will be receiver will take power in from these longer cables here. The shorter cables will be soldered directly to the battery. To power everything on, you simply unplug the plug from the jack and to shut it all back down, you simply reconnect it. After you've cut out the space for your servos and you have confirmed that they fit nicely inside, you'll be able to determine the position of where the plug is supposed to reside inside the fuselage. On mine, it determined it was set a few millimeters behind the start of the carbon fiber layup, very close to the center of the pod here. I drilled it out by hand first and then used this threaded rod to file it a little wider until it was fitting snug. Here you can see pressure fit, the plug holds just fine and it will be glued from the inside with the wires running towards the nose. Once you've made this hole, you can line it up on the nose cone and you can begin to sand file away at that same spot <clears throat> to allow a clean fit over the plug and charge port. Whenever we're changing plugs or resoldering battery connections, it's always best to work on one wire at a time, leaving the other one inside the connector and protected from short. This way it's a lot safer when doing these kinds of operations. So what I'll be doing here is I'll be using a couple spare bits of heat shrink and I'll disconnect these wires from the cable, tin up the tips, expose these tips, tin those up, slide some heat shrink over it, and solder it all together. So before you start soldering and disconnecting your battery, you're probably going to want to add some liquid electrical tape to where you solder the wires on the contact just to prevent any damage or short outs from loose connections or any sort of wear. That'll help prevent additional flex, it'll allow it to flex and still hold on as well as prevent anything from getting in there and shorting it out. Just for safety. You can also use some hot glue. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and individually cut the wire and reattach. So I first cut the ground, reattach, cut the power, reattach and he shrunk both of those just to protect them from shorting against each other. 
Now this can be test fit and installed into the nose cone and fuselage. So as you can see here, battery is all the way far forward and the wires are loosely in there and the connection is just past the hole. So there should be a little bit of wiggle room to allow me to scoot those wires on the other side of the servo. These are extra long because they're gonna pop down and come back up in order to attach to the receiver on the other side. So once we've got that worked out, we can test fit it. This is currently just held in with pressure. I was able to slide it in using a pair of hemostats and it just holds itself in place. I'm gonna drop a few drops of glue around the edge, being careful not to get any in there to cover up that pin, because if you cover up the pin, it won't work. Same thing if you break the connections on the outside in there. So it'll only be on the outside of this fuselage uh, and where it meets the charging plug port. But you can see here it's test fit and it runs up, the wires come up right against the servos and they split out either side and come down. This side for the battery, this side for the receiver. The reason I currently have these tied off is to prevent shorts since this is directly connected to the battery. If I were to plug this in underneath, that would disconnect this ground connection and we wouldn't have a short here. After you've confirmed the positioning and fit for your servos and your charging port, you can go ahead and pop the charging port in there and use some CA glue to fix it to place. I put a small drop or two on the outside and then worked it in using some paper from the edges to try to keep it thin and work it towards the seal. And then on the inside, I put some right up on the edge and just let it flow down and around the port. Once everything's finished up though, that port will be in there nice and solid so long as you don't go banging it too hard. Also as you can see, I twisted the wire just a little bit and I tucked the battery in here to the nose. This is now ready for connection to the receiver and when I go ahead and solder that to the receiver, I'll solder it with the power plug connected to the jack. This will disconnect the ground and guarantee that I won't be shorting out the receiver when I plug it in. It's hard to see in there without the light, but you can kind of tell how it's all connected. You can see a little bit of the shine from the CA glue there at the bottom. Finally, once your plug is done drying, you can test the fit for the hole that you carved on your nose cone. Mine fits pretty much perfectly here. I did have to do a little adjustments to get it to fit around the, the hole well, and it still just kind of slides off, working it back and forth. And as you see, it slides right on. Stays in place. So the next thing to do is to drop in the servos and have all of the wires line up correctly. Then once I have all the wires lined up, I've got the servos in place, I'll go ahead and solder everything to the receiver. I've mounted the servos in place. I've used just a little bit of the Gorilla Super Glue around the edges. And I also installed a small patch of fiberglass right here with a little bit of super glue over to prevent any lift up or pull back. That should be sufficient. If not, I'll have to increase that later with maybe some epoxy and micro balloons. Also, I took very uh, great care to make sure all of the wires run along the sides of the servos and not underneath. Doing that allows the servos to sit all the way down and create a very nice flush profile It looks like there's going to be a little bit of uh, tightness and fit in terms of getting the canopy on here. So I may end up having to cut back the servo arms a little bit, at least to the second hole. Also, I made sure to route two wires on either side. This just made it so that way I didn't have to cut as large of holes on either side. 
Also, it'll make it easier for wiring since it'll be coming in from both directions. It'll give me a little bit more space to work instead of having it all come from one spot. The receiver is going to sit right on top here. And I'll end up having to tuck the antennas into the nose. Okay, so we finished soldering up the connections here for the servos to the receiver. While I did this, I left the charge plug inserted into the jack, which keeps it powered off. I fed everything up through the bottom just to make soldering access easy from the top rather than having to keep it flipped over to work on it. I fed, once I uh, trimmed everything to length, I kind of pushed it all back inside, whatever excess I could, and then I'll take a little bit of hot glue and I'll glue it down like this. And this should be well within the nose cone, given how tall it is. And then once I glue it, I'll tuck these antennas back inside. So now that I've mounted the antenna, I've used some double-sided foam tape here. I felt like that would be a little bit better choice than using hot glue. If the hot glue were to heat up on a, on a nice warm day, it could melt and allow this to slide around or even fuse the nose cone uh, on there. So I did that. I also chopped off one hole on each arm, so I just made them two holes. This just allows the sliding of the uh, nose cone on just a little bit easier, but they have plenty of room in there once it's in. Also, I noticed that I had uh, cut the hole for the servo slightly to one side versus the other, so there's a little bit less room on this side, but there's still plenty of room for the arms to move, and it looks like it'll work out quite nicely. It feels like it's uh, nice and secure in there and I've also test fitted it. So as you can see this slides right on here. And you want to be careful once you're trying to get it over the receiver. You don't want to try and force and damage any components. Just wiggle it back and forth a little bit. And then it's a twist to get it on. And then that's fully on. And if I pull the plug, you'll see the lights change for the receiver. Now remember, to turn right, you're going to want to push the aileron since you're moving it from underneath. So these are going the correct way. And the same thing, the elevator is pulse sprung. So that's going to allow you to go up and down. So as you can see here, the receiver is connected. Now if I want to shut off the epi so that way I can charge it or just keep it in storage, all I have to do is plug it in lost. and the receiver has been shut off. Now if I unplug it again, it will reconnect. And you can see I've already configured the radio such that the telemetry voltage for the receiver is the battery voltage. So I can see that the battery is currently 3.8 volts, or it's in, so it's, it's in pretty good health right now. And I'll uh, go ahead and get it full later once it's ready to uh, get flying. Okay, that's going to pretty much wrap it up for this part of the build series. We were able to get the servos installed, get the charge port and connector installed, um, we were also able to get the servo uh, connected to the receiver. The antennas are tucked away on either side of the receiver and everything is soldered and wired up nice and small. Ready to go. Also we made the port on the nose cone for the charge connector so it fits over easily. 
cut back the servo control arms a little bit. And also, I did end up just taking the corners off of the receiver just to make it slide in a little bit easier and produce a little less friction when that nose cone goes over. So that's going to be it for today, and I hope you join us next time.